The book of Job is remarkable. Uh, they say that every actor wants to, at some time in their life, play Hamlet. Um, well, I also think it's true that every Old Testament professor wants to write a commentary on the book of Job. Uh, it is a truly remarkable book. It's been described as the greatest poetic work produced by Israel, and that greatness extends to its honesty, its perception, and its expression. Uh, what it says is remarkable. The, the insight it has in saying it is remarkable, and the way it says it is remarkable. Uh, it is, most of the book is poetry, complex, beautiful poetry. Uh, the first, chap, first two chapters are prose, the last chapter is prose, uh, and the 39 chapters in between are uh, complex, beautiful poetry. Uh, the reality is we don't know much about it. Uh, some have suggested it's an Edomite story. Uh, Job's friends do seem to come from, from Edomite towns, and Edom did seem to have some association with wisdom. Some say, no, it's just a traditional Israelite story, though it is told about Job, a man who is not an Israelite, uh, set pops possibly in the patriarchal period. Um, I kind of go with the maybe nobody knows theory where the story comes from, because I'm not real, real sure we can actually nail that down. Uh, all scholars agree that the book came together over a long period of time. Scholars don't agree as to how that happened. Some say that it's the prose that is the oldest piece and the poetic piece was added later on to fill in that story. Others say no, it's the poetry that's the oldest piece that dates way back into the second millennium um, and it is the, the bookends of the prose that were added to help that story make sense. Um, I come down on the I have no idea perspective on that one either. I'm willing to say it came together over a long period of time, that it's an old story, and that uh, nobody knows exactly how far back that it dates. Um, but our hero, our, our hero Job, uh, is not from Israel. He's greatest of the land of, of greatest in all the lands of the East. We don't know how far east that is. That east could be Edom. If it is, it's a little southeast. Um, that east could be all the way to Babylon. It could be a Babylonian traditional story. Really don't know how far the east is. Uh, when the Bible says this. But he's introduced as, introduced as a blameless and upright man, one who feared God and turned away from evil. Uh, the Hebrew word tamim means, uh, normally we think of it as blameless, perfect. Uh, you would think of it as sinless, but don't get too nervous about that. Uh, people often get a little twitchy when we start talking about Job as blameless. Uh, the Bible is not trying to make the case that Job is uh, perfect, sinless on the, on the level with Jesus. The Bible is trying to reinforce in the story that there is nothing that Job does that merits what happens next. You are not going to be able to draw a line between Job's behavior and the consequences which befall Job. All of his friends want to. But the Bible says from the very beginning, we as readers know, he is blameless, he is upright, he fears God. What happens next is not because of what Job did. That's an important thing to think about. Now, when you look at the book of Job, the book of Job has been called a theodicy. It's been called the, the Jewish theodicy, an ancient theodicy. Um, I guess it would be important to know what a theodicy is. A theodicy is a justification for God. Now, some of you are going to wonder what God needs justifying for. Uh, well, it's, it's a simple process. Um, most of us would accept that God is all good and that God is all powerful. Um, but we also have lived in this world long enough to know that evil exists. And to hold all three of those points in our mind without modification is a logical contradiction. Um, that God, if God is all good, evil could exist because God wasn't powerful enough to do something about it. Or, if God is all powerful, evil could exist because God's not all good. But we hold to this, that God is all good and God is all powerful, and we look in the world and we see that evil exists. Answering that question is a theodicy. How you answer that question is a theodicy. And there are different ways to do it. Augustine has his ways. Irenaeus has his ways, modern philosophers have had their ways. Um, this has been suggested to be the ancient Jewish way of trying to answer the question of why do bad things happen, answering this question of theodicy. So that's a, something I want you to have in your mind as we look at the text, because we're going to come back to that at the end.